Hi, I'm Matthew Tompkins with a tutorial for the Creative Cow. Uh, last time and the time before, we were looking at creating liquid effects in After Effects. Uh, we left off last time after just adding uh, a bit of a specular highlight to the particles, enhancing the edges here, and uh, just changing the way the particles interact. This time, I just wanted to uh, slow the animation down a little. It's still too fast um, for what I like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these layers, select them all, and I'm going to hold down Control Shift or Control or Command on the Mac and the Shift key and C. I'm going to pre-compose these and uh, let's call this for timing. Click OK. First of all, what I'll do is I'll just drop um, the resolution down to a quarter just so it's uh, a little easier to work with. And I'm going to right click my layer here and I'm going to come to time, enable time remapping. It's a little off to the left, but it's there. Now, with time remapping, it gives us a lot of control over the timing. I can add keyframes at specific points and I can drag them uh, apart to select those for extending. I'm just going to look at my clip and see which uh, parts are most interesting. So if I start somewhere perhaps here, add a keyframe. And come to about here, add a keyframe. And what I can do is I can then drag these apart. And what that's actually meant here is converted the time, or it's dragged the time and extended it between these two keyframes. So it's just going to fill in exactly the same amount of time that was before these, but over a longer distance of time. So essentially slowing down the clip. But it gives us more control as uh, this is still the start of the clip, so we can see this is actually uh, sped up. And then we come here and then we slow down again and speed up again. So I'll just do a run preview of that so we get the idea. I'll uh, pause this whilst uh, we wait for this to finish. Okay, that's finished doing the run preview. Let's take a look. As you can see, we had that fast part. Now we've uh, slowed down, and then these last two keyframes, we speed up again. So that's a nice effect, just uh, playing around with the time, kind of uh, like the matrix. If I come into the graph editor here, we can also get a lot more control here if I uh, select this keyframe. And again, choose the icon, convert to auto bezier. We can then uh, play around with these handles so we can ramp into the speed changes a bit better. So they're not uh, so jarring. And you can see how we're uh, actually curving the the value changes here, so it's a lot smoother. I'll do a round preview of that, so you can see it in comparison. Let's take a look. As you can see, that uh, was eased in a lot more now, and we're kind of ramping up to the next keyframe change and then speeding out. So that's kind of nice. I mean, that didn't take uh, too long to set up. The results are definitely worth it. So there's a lot you can play around with, with the time remapping function. Okay, so I'm just taking a look at this at uh, full screen resolution now. I think it's important that you do this, especially with the CC vector blur effect, as uh, if you apply too much uh, of the softness parameter, 
you tend to lose a lot of the sharpness and the definition of the image. So do keep checking back here and if you find um, that your results seem a little soft you can just dial down the softness parameter of uh, the CC vector blur effect. Now I'm just going to add some of the final so my own final touches to this. I've I've rendered out the clip just to speed uh, speed things along. First of all, I come to layer, new adjustment layer, and come to effect, color correction, curves. And I'm just going to bring our uh, shadows down here, just to increase our contrast here, and also uh, tweak our highlights. Just lends this nice uh, contrast here, especially with this kind of uh, bright HDR almost esque look here. Of some bright light just beyond our pixels here, or our particles. It's, it's looking good. Now the other thing um, you may remember from part two, we we're looking at. Uh, issue when our particles crossed the center of our composition and we're accidentally revealing um, our four color gradient that was in the background. What we can do is we can come on here if I uh, go to layer new adjustment layer you just see here where we're just pixelating out just a little here because I managed to avoid a lot of uh, A lot of that problem just by making sure the particles didn't cross there. Um, we can then come to if I press the Q key to get the mask tool and just draw a mask around the center of our image. Come to effect, blur and sharpen, just apply a fast blur. In this case, uh, four pixels is fine. Then press the MM key to get the mask properties here. I can just expand our mask out a little. You can maybe see its edges there too. And then just feather this. This gives us a bit of room to feather it. And then just, just tweak that so it's just the very um, central um, problem area that's affected. Let's just call this mask blur. Pressing the enter keys to rename these and the CC for color correction. Let's just uh, zoom out a bit again. Now, the other thing I'll add is if I press the control or command on the Mac and the Y key, uh, create a new solid and we'll call this texture. Come to effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. And then for fractal type, I'm just going to choose a smeary. I could raise the contrast of this up just a little. Maybe too much. But the default settings should be fine. And uh, I'm just going to dial the opacity of this down. As you can see, what we're actually doing now is just applying um, a little bit more texture to our image, um, whether it be some kind of papery type texture or some kind of membranous. Uh, liquid, but you can see here how it's uh, just adding a bit more as well to our particles also. It's almost like a, a watercolor type thing at the edge of the brushes where the, the inks gathered. Come to mode here, I can also change this to let me have a look, say color dodge and well, you can see this, I can dial that effect up a little. So I just want to keep it generally subtle, so I'll leave this at about 14. Okay, and then again, I'll press Control or Command on the Mac and the Y key. And this new solid I shall call Grain. I'll again, come to Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. And the Transform Attributes, I'm just going to bring the scale down to one. 
now we're just I'm just wanting to add just a little bit of uh, grain to our image um, I can dial this down and again this is the connector's texture and it can help you sharpen the image too um, so if I come down to evolution here and press alt or option key on the Mac time multiplied by 300 and that'll just evolve this kind of grain over the image. I'll also uh, do the same to our texture layer. Just open the fractal noise up, come to the evolution, hold the alt or option key on the Mac. Just click here, time multiplied by this time. I just multiply it by 50 should be fine. Okay. Let's clear these. Uh, now the only other thing I can think to do really, so I come to layer, new and create a solid. Let's uh, call this vignette and we'll actually create another one. Press the Q key. Yep, get the circular mask. Hold down the shift key just to constrain it uh, into this circle here. Let's drag this out. Um, I can just position this with the arrow keys holding down the shift key I can move it 10 pixels at a time instead of uh, just one it seems we've got a problem with the, uh, the edge of our mask so we'll just make sure it's my mask selected and not my layer and just move my mask around like that and just select my layer just bring this back down and uh, select my mask just bring this down and there we go then just want to invert this press MM to uh, get my mask feather controls just feather this out you can also uh, just increase the expansion of this I've not covered the edges let's just uh, move that along alternatively with this layer selected I could press the uh, controller command on the Mac the alt or option key on the Mac and uh, the F key and that just uh, brings this into position if it was offset I'm going to press the T key for the opacity I'm just going to dial this down again just tune fine-tune that this brings a little bit more depth on there. Let's bring my grain back over the top. Let's have a look at that in full screen. Okay, that's looking nice, and that's that's generally the the finishing touches I've put on that. I maybe play around with the time remap a little more, but other than that, I'd I'd be happy with that there. Thanks once again for watching, and happy experimenting.